Hello there. Let's talk about this sword today. This is the long leaf bladed sword made in Texas, U.S. by Valiant Armory as one of their Craftsman series offerings. It is designed to be a fantasy sword fusing Bronze Age European leaf shaped blades with a medieval style hilt. Valiant Armory is known for this style of functional fantasy sword designs as they draw inspirations from historical sword components from different time periods and combine them with a fantastical flair. Kane reviewed their Warden of the North sword before, which features a 13th century historical blade with a hilt from Game of Thrones. If you are interested in that exceptional sword, visit the link in the description below. This sword was gifted to me by Kane, as the grip is my favorite color, aqua green, and he thinks the overall silhouette resembles a mermaid, which happens to be my favorite fantasy creature. Don't you think the distinct fishtail pommel the wasted grip, the graceful upturned quillons, and the sexy leaf contour give the visage of a mermaid. Its size is rather compact for a hand and a half sword, perfect for a person of my stature. The blade is 30 inch long, and the overall length is 41.2 inches. The hilt is rather long, and with the wasted grip and the fishtail pommel, it's easy to space out two hands and utilize the leverage to better maneuver the sword which is necessary for me, as the sword isn't exactly lightweight at 2 pounds and 11 ounces, although its point of balance is very close to the hilt at 3 and a quarter inches. My husband uses it as a single-handed sword with ease, but for me, two hands on the grip allows me to operate the sword with precision and speed. Despite the good amount of distal taper and the close point of balance, the blade feels surprisingly forward heavy because of the broadening of the blade profile near the point of percussion. This adds more mass to the cutting portion of the blade, thus making the sword doing most of the work for you. As a result, the cuts are all very authoritative. Even though the precision of the tip, the acute tapering to a needle point, and the rigidity of the blade make it also a good sword for thrusting, these characteristics and the proportion of the blade to the hilt make it handle more like a katana than an European longsword. The blade has a nice wasted geometry by starting out at 51.2 mm, narrowing down to 37.7 mm at the waist, and broadening up to 45 mm at 20 inches from the hilt, and quickly tapers down to an acute point. It is also very well distally tapered, starting at 5.4 mm, thinning to 4 mm at the midpoint. 3.8 by the end of the fuller and 3 mm at 2 inches from the tip. The blade has a narrow fuller running two-thirds of the blade length, terminating right at the point of percussion. The entirety of the blade has a diamond cross section. Past the fuller, there's a prominent and crisp central ridge, making it very rigid. The blade is expertly ground with very flat and smooth planes and very little rippling. It's perfectly symmetrical. The edges of the fuller and the central ridge are arrow straight. The fullers on both sides also terminate to the exact same spot. The surfaces are polished to a mirror sheen. Suffice to say, the fit and finish of the blade is perfect. The hilt furniture is no exception. The cross guard and the pommel are flawlessly symmetrical, with very defined edges. The cross guard aperture to receive the blade is very tight. The upturned quillons and the central ridge of the guard fit the mouth of the scabbard perfectly. The pommel is a fantasy take on the historical fishtail type, and it is gorgeous with all the concave geometries. It's neatly pinned to put all hilt components together soundly. The blade chimes with a resounding ringtone when it clashes with the target, a telltale sign of expert heat treatment and a skillfully assembled hilt. The grip, like I mentioned before, 
has an antique aqua green leather wrapping and a waisted geometry. Its center flared up in both the thickness and the width to space out your two hands, which grabs onto the grip with good purchase. Due to the multiple risers on the upper portion and the cord impression on the lower portion, the transitions to both the pommel and the guard are both flush without any gap or ledge. I would give the hilt also a 10 out of 10, but sadly it has some issues. The pommel and the quillons are made of mild steel that has consistent hue to the blade, which is good, but somehow the steel is extremely prone to rust. And even if 10 minutes going by without you oiling the blade after handling, it would be covered by surface rust. From what we have heard, this is true to all Valiant Armory swords, and this is only a minor issue here. The major complaint is that the edges on the guard and the pommels are way too sharp, and the corners are pointier than the tip of the blade. They have scratched me several times during handling, and a cane has been stabbed twice during cutting by the pointy corners, to the point that they drew blood. Now this sword cuts really well, but it has been imbued with my essence now. Look at this bloody part. Where does the blood come from? Yeah, the official pommel has the advantage of being partially gripped and needs to be handled. So these edges and corners need to be rounded. Look at the corners and edges on the Albion ring egg. They're all rounded. There's no hot spot. On this one, however, this thing can actually stab into people. Rent the flesh, all right, and the user's flesh. That's a problem. These edges, corners are really crisp, um, which is visually stunning. But functionally, it has some problems. See, these edges are not chamfered or rounded at all. And this central beak or ridge, it really poked into my finger. Take a look at this. It stabbed into my finger when I cut with the work cuff. Right? You are supposed to send the blade here, and it's in the center, and there's an impact stab into my finger. So this has to be improved for anyone who intend to use it. This has never happened to us, even though we have handled over a hundred swords. And this issue isn't present on the other Valiant Armory sword we own, the Warden of the North, as the edges are all rounded or chamfered on that sword. Yes, the user can round the edges and the corners down with a sandpaper, but it really shouldn't have been present on the sword to begin with. Other than that, the entire sword is an incredible package, completed by a well-crafted scabbard, also with antique aqua green leather wrapping and two risers to mirror the fuller. It has a rather simple steel shape and a throat that fits the spike on the crossguard perfectly. Once the blade is sheathed in there, it's very tightly secured and will never slide out, but can be pulled out quite smoothly. I absolutely love this sword, and we had a blast cutting with it especially at the beach.
Both the aesthetics and the handling are splendid, and it appears to be very durable as well, being made of 6150 spring steel, which is a preferred choice by high-end makers. It's tempered to be flexible enough to endure hard impact, but stiff enough to perform well in both cutting and thrusting. If Valiant Armory can address the sharp edges and the corners, and blue the steel-hilled furniture, it will be the perfect sword. Let us dive into the Elven Grace and Mermaid Splendor this world inspires. To me, it is certainly a work of art, 